Well, the ALAR pulse oximetry should work on anybody that has an eligible ALAR monitoring site. A patient, for example, just had a heart attack, has a low cardiac output, is peripherally vasoconstricted. A patient where your peripheral monitor fails and you don't have access to the site to replace it, generally you still have access to the head. A patient who is hypothermic, somebody's completely vasoconstricted peripherally, uh, you still expect to get a good signal, interpretable signal with good data from the ALAR sensing site. First example that comes to mind is, is in the operating room. A patient with the arms tucked and you get a dropout of the peripheral sensor either because it was moved or became disconnected or because the circulation changed. I have access to the head, I put a nasal ALAR probe in its place and I immediately have information again within literally within seconds. In the case of a trauma patient, somebody with with very poor perfusion. Do you want to know that you still have perfusion because the pulse oximeter is also a sign of life? Helps you differentiate electrical activity from electrical activity without a pulse, so-called PEA. We would be quick to put an ALAR sensor on if we weren't satisfied or able to get anything from the periphery. I think part of the durability of the nasal ALAR sensor accrues to the fact that there's no adhesive involved. So you don't have the adhesive residue and the nasal ALAR sensor is almost self-retaining because there's enough friction between the silicone pads and the springy C-clip that it holds itself in place and so it's very easy to slide off and to reapply again without substantially distorting the sensor or putting stresses on the wiring or the, the mechanism.